Microsoft has unveiled the Majorana 1 quantum chip, a groundbreaking device the size of Palm with an astonishing 1 million qubits. This announcement was so extraordinary that we felt the need to verify it by reviewing a scientific paper published in February 2025. Imagine waking up one morning and seeing this message on your screen. This computation will take 49 years in classic computer mode. Would you like to switch to quantum mode? Without hesitation, you select yes, and your 1 million qubit computer completes the massive simulation in just a few hours. But here's the key question. Is a 1 million qubit chip truly ready for sale? Microsoft is announcing Majorana 1, but they are being cautious. While using every bit of their marketing prowess, they stop short of making a definitive statement that the chip is fully developed and available. For 17 years, Microsoft has been working on this technology, claiming to have solved the biggest challenge in quantum computing, qubit instability, and noise issues. However, there is a difference between what is shown on YouTube and what is found in peer-reviewed scientific papers. If you watch their promotional videos, the chip appears to be fully operational. But when you examine the actual research, the reality is more nuanced. Let's be clear, the chip is not yet ready. However, this does not mean there is no quantum computing revolution on the horizon. In a post-truth era, relying on a single source is never enough to find accurate information. It is crucial to examine multiple sources. Microsoft has produced highly polished promotional videos, but they seem more tailored for investors. So, is there any scientific publication supporting their claims? Looking into it, we find a paper authored by Microsoft's quantum research team, published in February 2025. However, when we compare it with their YouTube presentations, we notice discrepancies. Microsoft makes bold promises in their videos, but scientific evidence forces us to question how much of it has actually been realized. One of Microsoft's core messages revolves around the problem of qubit instability. Quantum computers rely on qubits, maintaining their superposition state. If this state is lost, computations generate excessive errors and ultimately fail. In today's quantum computing technology, errors are a natural part of the process. Reducing these errors and extending the duration of superposition is the primary goal. However, maintaining superposition for long periods is incredibly challenging. This is why quantum processors must be kept at extremely low temperatures. Even the slightest temperature fluctuation can disrupt superposition, causing computations to fail and error rates to spike. That is why quantum computers require massive cooling systems. As the number of qubits increases, the size of the necessary cooling infrastructure can reach skyscraper levels. This is exactly where Microsoft comes in. They claim that their newly developed Majorana 1 chip solves this problem. According to Microsoft, this new chip can operate without requiring a massive cooling infrastructure like existing systems and significantly reduces error rates. If this claim holds true, it could be a revolutionary breakthrough in the scalability of quantum computers. Scalability means moving away from room-sized quantum machines and integrating multiple chips into a single piece of hardware, making it compact enough to be sold as a commercial product. The greatest achievement of Microsoft's Majorana 1 chip is its ability to observe and control the Majorana particle and transform it into a new material for quantum computing. This is truly a significant step forward. If the claims are entirely accurate, it could be an even bigger leap than the transistor revolution. To fully grasp Microsoft's breakthrough in quantum computing, we first need to understand the fundamental nature of Majorana particles. Theoretical predictions for these exotic particles date back to 1937, when Italian physicist Ettore Majorana first proposed their existence. Unlike classical particles, Majorana particles exhibit fundamentally different behaviors. To explain this phenomenon, we need to simplify the concept significantly, stripping it down to its essence. What exactly is a Majorana particle? By its very nature, a Majorana particle can be its own antiparticle. In other words, instead of being distinct entities that annihilate each other upon contact, the particle and its antiparticle can exist as two complementary faces of the same quantum entity. Furthermore, thanks to the extraordinary principles of quantum mechanics, these particles can exist at two physically separate locations while simultaneously sharing the same quantum state, the same quantum information. It is as if one is the identical backup of the other. To better understand this, consider a simple analogy. 
Imagine an apple cut perfectly in half. Even if the two halves are separated and placed in different locations, they still retain the complete information of the original apple and together form a whole. Similarly, Majorana particles exist at two different locations while storing a single, unified quantum state. This property offers a significant advantage for quantum computing. Traditional quantum bits store information in particles located at a single point. If that particle is disrupted by external factors, such as magnetic noise, the stored data is lost. However, with Majorana particles, information can be distributed across two physically separate locations. Even if part of the system is damaged, the data remains intact in the other half. This principle, known as topological protection, makes Majorana-based qubits far more stable than conventional qubits. For over 17 years, Microsoft has been researching this unique capability to develop noise-resistant, low-error quantum computers. The company has successfully observed Majorana quasi-particles within specific quantum materials and validated this phenomenon through scientific publications. However, it is still too early to declare the commercial success of Majorana-based quantum computers. In conclusion, the natural fault tolerance offered by Majorana particles is unlocking a new era of quantum computation. Microsoft's dedication and long-term strategy could play a crucial role in shaping the future of quantum technology. If you strip away the flashy parts of Microsoft's grand announcement, the core message is this. Microsoft has stated that they can control Majorana particles and use them in a quantum chip. But is this just a marketing statement, or is it scientifically supported? Looking at the academic side, we find that a peer-reviewed paper on this topic has indeed been published. For those interested, we have included a free link to the paper in the description. But instead of taking Microsoft's claims at face value, let's take a closer look at the paper published by the Microsoft Quantum Team titled A Roadmap for Fault-Tolerant Quantum Computing Using Topological Qubit Arrays. The first thing that stands out, the word roadmap in the title. This does not mean the technology is fully developed and commercially available. Instead, it suggests that a plan is being presented. However, this point is not emphasized much in Microsoft's YouTube presentations. In other words, there's a noticeable difference between the here's the new chip message in their videos and the more cautious explanations in the paper. So, what is the actual situation? That's what we need to examine through scientific data. The most critical point highlighted in the paper is that Majorana particles naturally provide protection, significantly reducing error rates. This discovery enables the creation of qubits that inherently resist errors. Instead of correcting errors after they occur, Microsoft has designed a system that prevents errors from forming in the first place. The most striking claim in the paper is this. The new material could reduce error rates by a factor of 100. This point is emphasized both in the research and in Microsoft's YouTube presentations. If this has truly been achieved, and according to the peer-reviewed paper, that seems to be the case, it could be a groundbreaking development in the world of quantum computing. While Google and IBM focus on error correction through software-based algorithms, Microsoft has taken a different approach by designing hardware that produces fewer errors from the start. This raises an intriguing question. What would happen if Microsoft's hardware were combined with Google's powerful error correction software? That's where things get truly exciting. Now, let's address a critical question. Does the paper provide a definitive measurement of a new processor's superposition duration? The answer is no. The paper does not include any measure results. However, it predicts that the superposition duration will be several times longer than that of standard quantum computer qubits. The key word here is predicts. This is an estimate, not a measured and verified fact. Yet, when you watch Microsoft's promotional videos, you get the impression that this progress has already been definitively proven. Maybe it's just a matter of perception. At this point, your opinions also matter. If you look at Microsoft's presentations, you might get the idea that this new chip is something you could plug into your desktop computer and start using immediately. However, according to the paper, the chip was tested at minus 271.95 degrees Celsius. Now, at what temperature does Google's standard quantum computer operate? Minus 273.135 degrees Celsius. The difference is just 1.19 degrees Celsius, meaning we're nowhere near room temperature. However, 
Even this small temperature difference is crucial. If you were to increase the temperature of Google's quantum computer by just 1.2 degrees Celsius, the system would completely fail. The error rates would rise so dramatically that computations would become impossible. In the world of quantum computing, even 1.2 degrees Celsius can mean the difference between success and failure. According to the paper, the maximum number of qubits used in the study was just eight. Yes, you heard that right, eight qubits. There was no test or experiment involving the one million qubit processor frequently mentioned in Microsoft presentations. However, the paper does state that, in theory, it is possible to scale up to one million qubits on a single chip. When we critically analyze the differences between the research paper and the YouTube presentations, if we're not misunderstanding, Microsoft is claiming that it could reach 1 million qubits in the future. However, the currently tested system is limited to just 8 qubits. Of course, if Microsoft has other ongoing research that has not been publicly disclosed, the situation might be different. But to be honest, we have no way of knowing that. According to the scientific publication, the qubits used were Majorana-based, as Microsoft has stated in its public materials, so there is no inconsistency in that regard. However, when considering that Google and IBM have conducted similar experiments at the 100 qubit level, the number of qubits Microsoft has tested so far appears relatively low. This means that, for now, the claim of 1 million qubits seems to be more of a long-term goal rather than an immediate reality. In the conclusion of the paper, it is emphasized that Majorana-based topological qubits have been demonstrated to be viable, but further experimental validation is needed before the technology becomes commercially available. In other words, despite the perception created in Microsoft's YouTube presentations that the chip is ready, there is no commercially available 1 million qubit processor yet. However, the paper does state that reaching this goal is theoretically possible. From this perspective, Microsoft's claim is not false but it also has not yet been realized in practice. Still, it's worth emphasizing that, even theoretically, fitting one million qubits into a chip the size of human palm is a truly groundbreaking achievement. Personally, I don't find Microsoft's decision to highlight the one million qubit claim in its marketing materials misleading. Even if it remains theoretical for now, the potential is so massive that Microsoft saw no reason to hold back on making it a central part of its messaging. The biggest difference between Microsoft's YouTube presentations and its scientific paper lies in the contrast between marketing language and academic reality. The YouTube message suggests, here is our one million qubit chip, while the research paper takes a more cautious and theoretical approach. Why is that? Because in the world of science, it is unacceptable to present unproven claims as established facts. While in marketing, making bold predictions about the future is a common strategy. Microsoft presents the unverified aspects of its work as a vision for the future in its YouTube videos while being forced to acknowledge in its scientific paper that they are still in the eight qubit test phase. As a result, a person watching the YouTube presentation might believe the technology is fully developed, while a person reading the research paper would understand that this is just a roadmap.